Hello there. In the 1950s, a very strange phenomenon occurred in Taiwan. A noblewoman suddenly fainted and died, but on the day of her funeral, she came back to life and claimed to have borrowed the body to return her soul. At that time, countless media outlets and spiritual experts conducted in-depth investigations into this matter. However, to this day, no one has been able to provide a reasonable explanation. So, is the phenomenon of borrowing a body to return a soul real or fake? And is there another secret behind this return? Today, I will tell you about a stormy event that once took place in Taiwan, the case of Zhu Xu Hua borrowing a body to return her soul, which stirred up public opinion. This happened in 1959. That year, Mr. Wu Tu Duk, the owner of a construction materials store in Mailiao District, Taiwan Province, received a large contract. On the island of Haifeng in Taishi District, about 10 kilometers from Mailiao, a large-scale construction project was underway. As one of the largest construction material suppliers in the area, Mr. Wu Tu Duk was tasked with supplying construction materials and supervising the project. For several months, he devoted all his energy and effort to the project in Haifeng. Every day, he worked from early morning until late at night, hardly ever going home. However, when the project was nearing completion, Mr. Wu Tu Duk unexpectedly received a letter from home. In the letter, his wife, Mrs. Lin Guangdi, had suddenly contracted a strange illness. Her health condition was unstable, sometimes good, sometimes bad. And when it worsened, her body became so weak that she had to stay bedridden. Upon receiving this news, Wu Tu Duk was extremely worried about his wife. Therefore, he decided to rush home that very afternoon. But as he was heading home, he noticed that his bicycle seemed heavier than usual. However, worried about his wife, he didn't pay much attention to it. Little did he know, a series of strange phenomena were about to unfold. Not long after, Wu Tu Duke arrived home, but Mrs. Lin Guangdi's condition had rapidly deteriorated. Initially, she was still conscious, but as her husband entered the room, she gradually fell into a coma. Seeing this, Wu Tu Duk immediately took his wife to the hospital. Despite the doctor's best efforts, Lin Guangdi ultimately showed no signs of life. Strangely, throughout this time, the doctors could not determine the cause of her illness. Finally, on the death certificate, the doctor merely wrote, Cause of death unknown. Seeing his previously healthy wife suddenly pass away dealt a significant psychological blow to Wu Tu Duk. He called upon all his friends and relatives to prepare a grand funeral for his wife. However, no one could have expected that on the day Lin Guangdi was to be buried, her body suddenly sat up among the crowd and uttered a very strange statement, saying she was Zhu Xu Hua, reborn through the body of Lin Guangdi. As this statement was made, everyone at the funeral was shocked and chilled to the bone. Especially her husband, Mr. Wu Tu Duk, who had just experienced the pain of losing his wife and hadn't yet recovered from the surprise of her revival, now faced her baseless claims. Although confused, he pretended to remain calm and took his wife home. After calming his nerves, he mustered the courage to listen to her story. According to Lin Guangdi's account after coming back to life, she was Zhu Xu Hua, daughter of Mr. Chu Qing, who owned a grocery store in Kinmen New Territories. She began practicing and studying Buddhism from the age of 15. At 18, due to the war, she and her parents had to flee Shenyang. However, on their way, her parents were unfortunately killed by artillery fire. Thus, Zhu Xu Hua had to escape alone on a fishing boat. Unfortunately, this boat was also hit by artillery fire while at sea. Zhu Xu Hua could only cling to the broken boat and drift on the sea for three days without food or water. She witnessed the absence of any other people or boats and found herself on the brink of death. Eventually, the boat fragment brought Zhu Xu Hua to an offshore island west of Yunlin County, Taiwan, where she was fortunately discovered by a fishing boat. However, when Zhu Xu Hua thought she was saved, the fishermen, driven by greed, coveted the valuables she had on her. They not only robbed Zhu Xu Hua of all her possessions, but also tried to rape her. 
Zhu Xu Hua cried out in pain, calling to the heavens, but no one answered. Finally, fearing trouble, the fisherman ignored her pleas and pushed her back into the sea, where she gradually disappeared into the ocean. Strangely, she still felt conscious at that moment, feeling her body floating around the island. By chance, she encountered Wu Tu Duk, who was working at the construction site. She saw this man as honest and kind, but his wife was about to die. So she decided to follow Wu Tu Duk and his wife, waiting for an opportunity. Upon hearing this story, Wu Tu Duk felt a chill run through his skin because he suddenly recalled that on his way home, he had always felt that his bicycle was unusually heavy, as if someone was sitting behind him. Not only that, but his colleagues often teased him, saying that he was lucky to always have a young, beautiful girl following him. At that time, Wu Tu Duke thought his colleagues were just joking and paid no attention to it. But now, in retrospect, he broke out in a cold sweat because everything that happened was so bizarre. However, what he did not expect was that this was just a small part of a long story. Next, what happened made it even harder for people to believe. Ling Guangdi not only knew everything about Zhu Xu Hua, but also underwent significant changes in personality, language, and daily habits. For instance, Ling Guangdi, a woman nearing 40 years old who had lived a reclusive life in the village, transformed into a young girl of about 17 or 18 after her return. Lin Guangdi's family also began to believe that she had become Zhu Xu Hua. Even the director of the 815 military hospital visited Lin Guangdi to check if she was suffering from any mental illness. With the witnesses of experts and extensive media coverage, the event of Lin Guangdi's return quickly became a famous story in Taiwan. It attracted the attention of supernatural researchers across the country and even some foreign experts. To avoid drawing attention, they had to relocate and live in seclusion in the outskirts of Taiwan. This event was also recorded in a book by Buddhist monk Yang Dai Jing about the era of science and reincarnation. Is there really such a phenomenon as body possession? Moreover, in Chinese history, there are many stories about body possession. For example, in the Song Dynasty's Taiping Guangji, the case of Yuan Mei, a poet of the Qing Dynasty, and records of possession in Ji Yun's novels. These examples often occurred in legends or historical periods when technology was not developed, and we cannot verify them. Yes, such events should be exposed more to be reasonable, but why are they becoming rarer and even non-existent? This partly reflects that most borrowed body and returned soul events are actually the result of word of mouth and deification mistakes. In other words, Determining whether Zhu Xu Hua actually existed is a big question mark. If from the beginning, Zhu Xu Hua did not exist, then no matter how reasonable this story sounds, it is just a vivid tale of imagination. According to Zhu Xu Hua's own description, her father was Chu Qing. Some people asked the local residents in Kinmen, and they confirmed that there was indeed a grocery store owner named Chu Qing but he and his family disappeared during the war and were never seen again. In other words, whether or not there was a daughter named Zhu Xu Hua of Mr. Chu has not been accurately answered to this day. This also opens up a lot of room for imagination for people. So how do we explain Lin Guangdi's sudden death and revival along with the strange actions she performed? First, regarding the strange death and sudden revival, Modern biology has a term called apparent death. This is an innate phenomenon of living organisms. When an organism faces a significant external threat, its body will immediately enter a quiescent state, leading to a substantial decrease in energy consumption and production. This state appears similar to death. The body then naturally recovers within a few minutes or even days. This phenomenon can be triggered by extreme stimuli and is common in insects and some mammals. Of course, this also applies to humans. Funeral workers often encounter such cases and are well aware of it. In the past, there were rumors about hauntings in crematoriums. People said that when corpses were burned in the furnace, there were often terrible screams. Some believed it was the cries of spirits unable to bear the pain. However, after years of research by scientists, 
It turned out that this was due to the underdeveloped medical system. They mistook apparent death for real death. When those in an apparent death state were put into the crematorium, the high temperature stimulated their nervous system, causing them to revive immediately. But by then, it was too late to escape. After their final screams, they turned to ashes. Lin Guangdi was a case like this. Fortunately, she woke up before being cremated. So, what caused Lin Guangdi to be in this state? Experts speculate that it might be due to a previous head injury, leading to damage to the frontal lobe. A similar incident occurred in the United States. A worker was accidentally impaled through the head by an iron rod. Miraculously, after medical intervention, he survived. Not only that, but except for losing vision in one eye, most of his language, memory, and motor skills were unaffected. More astonishingly, his personality seemed to change drastically. Initially, he was a simple and honest man, but unexpectedly, he became arrogant and unpleasant. After he died, doctors examined his brain and discovered the cause of his significant personality change. The reason was severe damage to a part of the brain called the frontal lobe. This led to the drastic personality change afterward. Comparing his experience to Lin Guangdi's, it is not hard to see that their experiences were almost identical. Both underwent an incident and then started exhibiting strange behaviors. Therefore, instead of saying Lin Guangdi was a case of borrowed body and returned soul, it would be more accurate to say that she experienced a mental disturbance due to the negative consequences of past actions leading to a series of cognitive disorders. She mistakenly believed she was someone else and mimicked a series of behaviors reflecting the image she thought matched that persona. Her recognition of herself as Zhu Xu Hua, even being able to recount the family history and names of Zhu Xu Hua's parents, is actually not hard to understand. Have you ever experienced a situation where, even though it was your first time visiting a place or meeting someone, you felt an inexplicable sense of familiarity? It is when one suddenly feels familiar with something they have never experienced or seen before. In other words, it is possible that Lin Guangdi met Zhu Xu Hua before she died or heard about her from someone else, and her brain recorded these details completely, replaying them at some point. However, this remains speculation. The ultimate truth may require other scientific explanations. There might be some scientific theories we do not yet understand. On May 23, 2018, after nearly 60 years since Zhu Xu Hua's return, she passed away at the age of 97 due to organ failure. With her passing, many controversies and explanations surrounding her will remain mysteries. And you? What do you think about today's story? Please leave your opinion below in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to support us. Thank you, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.